In this video, we will compute the deseasonalized data points for each period. So previously, we've calculated the seasonal index for every period. So we have nine periods worth of data here. And uh, so we have the first quarter, the first year, or the first quarter of the second year, and we have the first quarter of the third year. And you can see that every time we are talking about the first quarter of a year, we use the seasonal index for the first quarter, 0 0.868, 0 0.868, 0 0.868. That way, when we deseasonalize, we always use the same index for the first quarter, we always use the same index for the second quarter, et cetera. So that is, uh, that is very important. That was the whole point of calculating the seasonal indexes. Now, to deseasonalize, what we're trying to do is we are trying to take seasonality out of the story. We're trying you know, to hypothetically see what things would have been like if there had not been any seasonality. The way we think about the seasonal index is how much is a particular period above or below what we would have expected under normal circumstances. So reversing that logic, flipping it upside down, we're going to take what actually happened and divide it by the seasonal index to get our estimate of what would have happened had there been no seasonality. So to get our deseasonalized numbers for the first data point, we're going to take the actual sales, 90, and divide by the seasonal index for the first quarter, 0 0.868. And that is going to give us a number of 103 points up. So that is the number that we will use in the next step when we go to calculate the, estimate the trend. So, okay, that's how we do the first period. When we go to look at period number five, same thing, we'll take 110, we'll divide it by 0.868. Uh, let me do the second period just to show you again. So 121, the actual, and divided by the index for the second quarter, 0 0.988. And that gives us a DC as a lies number of 122.5. And we just keep going like that. And really the only thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you're taking the original sales numbers, dividing them by the seasonal index. And the only trick is to make sure that you just always use the right seasonal index. Use the first quarter one for the first quarter, use the second quarter numbers for every time there's a second quarter, et cetera. It's really fairly straightforward. Um, and so why are we doing this? Like I said, we're trying to see what would happen if there had not been any seasonality. So. Uh, last time I graphed the original sales, and now I will graph the, the original sales and the deseasonalized numbers after I write down the rest of the deseasonalized numbers. So comparing the original data, the greenish yellowish line, to the second line, which is supposed to be orange, you can see that the, the deseasonalized numbers fall along much closer to a straight line. So when we do a linear regression, um, we'll get a much better fit because the original data is much more closely approximating of a straight line. I hope this has been helpful.